Autolite and its 96,000 dealers bring you Mr. Frank Lovejoy in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, you will take a trip on a train, a journey exact in time and place, during which Autolite will recreate an historical puzzle by dramatizing with story and song The Wreck of the Old 97. Tonight's star, Mr. Frank Lovejoy. Hi, Mr. McSorley. Hey, you'd better be starting for the St. Patrick's Day Parade. I can't get started, Harlow. My car battery's dry as an Irishman's wit. Why, you ought to have an Autolite Stay Full battery. A battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use? Tis one and the same. The dependable battery that will start you swift and sweet as a Colleen smile. And the Autolite Stay Full gives longer life, as proved by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. Well... Where do we get an Autolite stay full? From your Autolite battery dealer. He services all makes of batteries, and if a replacement is needed, he has an Autolite stay full battery for your car. So, friends, just call Western Union by number. And ask for me, Operator 25. I'll tell you where you can get an Autolite stay full. The battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, with. The Wreck of the Old 97, and the performance of Mr. Frank Lovejoy. Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. Looming up at him on the track ahead. The snow was real heavy that night. Visibility less than zero, if that's possible. Not snowing as hard as now, but nearly. No warning, mind you. Nothing. People sleeping, eating, drinking, just talking like we're doing, and bam, all over. Finished. Terrible wreck. Snowing this bad, huh? Yeah, but then, of course, they didn't have signal systems like we have, or safety measures like we have. Did they, Joe? No, I don't believe so. Of course, the worst wreck I ever heard of was told me by my dad when I was a kid. The fast mail was a train. The Southern Railway. The line, you know, same as we're on now. You probably heard about it. The wreck of the old 97. Uh, Casey Jones was the engineer on that, wasn't he? No, no, Casey Jones had the cannonball. Oh. Joseph A. Brody had the old 97. Matter of fact, that was named for him. Funny thing. What? No, it's nothing. What? We weren't related to the Joe Brody I'm talking about. We just happened to have the same name. Hey, where are we? Well, it's almost 6.30. We're coming into Monroe. 15 minutes stop over to change crews. Then Lynchburg and Danville arrived Danville at 8.25. Mm. All 97, never made it. What did you start to say before? Funny thing what? Oh, oh, yeah. A story my dad used to tell about the 97. Carried a crew of three. Was wrecked, as you know. They found five bodies in the wreckage. What? Yeah, I found two more bodies in the wreck than was supposed to be on the train. Well, how'd that happen? A funny story. Strange, I mean. Yeah? Well, tell us. Okay. I told you I was named for the engineer on the old 97, didn't I, Joe uh-huh. Brody? Well, this is where he picked up the train, right here in Monroe, Virginia. Although it used to go all the way to Spencer. Train started further north from Washington Station. The day I'm talking about was a Sunday, September 27th, 1903. And here's what happened. On a cold, frosty morning in the month of September, when the clouds were hanging low, 97 pulled out from the Washington station like an arrow shot from a bow. Morning, Joe. Morning, Mr. Elkins. Yeah, seems we got a little trouble up the line. What's the matter? She ain't running on time. How late is she? Forty minutes at Rapidan. Well, that's bad. Joe, it's terrible. Old 97's never run a minute late since she went into service. Don't you worry, Mr. Elkins. She won't be late on our division. I'll get into Danville on time. <laughs> Ah, 
That's the kind of man he was, the Joe Brody I was named for. He was a proud man and the best engineer on the line. And he loved old 97. It was Joe who'd driven her down from the World's Fair at Chicago when she was on exhibit as the newest, most powerful engine in the world. And it was Joe who'd driven her over the Blue Ridge Mountains from Monroe to Danville ever since. The old 97 was Joe's baby. And in Danville that morning, his wife was expecting a real baby. A better than usual reason for getting to Danville that day. There was another man on that train who wanted real bad to get to Danville on time. Big Tom Jeter, the fireman. Morning, Mr. Brody. Morning, Mr. Elkins. Morning, Tom. Morning, Tom. I hear she's late. Forty minutes at Rapidan. Well, today, my mammy and pappy's been married 50 years. Their golden anniversary. I figured to get in on time today. We will, Tom. Whole family's gonna meet me at the station. Big greeting for the youngest child. Fireman for Mr. Brody. We'll get there in time if you keep that fire going this morning. I will, Mr. Brody. Oh, here, Joe. I'll get your orders ready. They gave him his orders at Monroe, Virginia, saying, Joe, you're way behind time. This is not 38, but it's old 97. You must put her in Danville on time. So there they were, the engineer and the fireman, each one with a special reason for wanting to get to Danville on time. And there was the third member of the crew, old Mr. Clovis, the clerk in the mail car. He had his reason, too. Oh... Morning, Mr. Clovis. Morning, Mr. Elkins. Morning, Joe. Morning, Mr. Clovis. How's she running? Late. Late, huh? Too bad. She had to be late, especially today, Mr. Clovis. Oh, say, I'd forgotten. You are retiring today, aren't you, sir? Yes, this is my last run. Well, I'll try to make up the time for you, Mr. Clovis. Can't end 30 years of railroading behind schedule. Uh, I don't care so much myself, but I believe some of the... Gentlemen from the division office were going to meet the train in Danville. I believe there was to be a ceremony. <laughs> I know dang well there is. They're going to give you the prettiest gold hunting case watch in the Blue Ridge Mountains, all engraved. I saw it myself last week. Well, that's very nice, but quite unnecessary. How's it feel to retire, Mr. Clovis? It feels fine, Joe. I'll step down to the platform, and from that moment, I'll have nothing to do but die. Well, you can live, can't you, Mr. Clovis? Live for what? This is my life. What time is it? Hey, Mr. Elkins, did you hear the news? Oh, what news? Hey, them two fellows that had up in the jailhouse. Them two held up the bank over in Amherst and killed the teller. What about them? They broke out. When? Less than an hour ago. They split the turnkey skull open, walked out of the jailhouse, big as you please. The sheriff's getting a posse together. For what for? The figures are headed for the hills. Go and track them down with hounds. If they're headed for the hills, they're crazy. Well, why, Mr. Brody? Well, if I was trying to make a break for it, I wouldn't take any chances being tracked by bloodhounds. What would you do, Joe? I'd head for the railway, hop the first train that came through. Now, across the tracks from the station agent's office and right near the water tower was a tool shack. And at that very moment we were talking about, these two killers were hiding there. Or at least that's the way I was told the story. What are we going to do, Clint? We're in Monroe, Virginia. A town with five churches, 15 saloons, and a jailhouse. What are we going to do? You think a posse couldn't track us down if we took to the hills? We ain't going to take to the hills, honey boy. We're going to take the old 97 right straight to Danville. At Danville, we got a man waiting for us. He could put guns in our hands and tell us where to use them. Honey boy, when we get on that old 97, we don't have a worry about a thing. Clint, you suppose you hit that turnkey too hard? I hit him hard enough to knock him out. You suppose you hit him hard enough to kill him? What's the difference? We killed a man yesterday. We might as well kill another one today. We didn't kill that teller, Clint. You did. Listen, honey boy. Makes no difference who pulled the trigger. Understand me? No difference. Sure, Clint. Sure. Here she comes. 
Come on, let's get out of here and wait for us. They'll see us, Clint. Nobody's gonna see us. They're all watching the train. Here she comes. Come on, Mr. Clovis. Let's get out there and find out why Pete's so late. All right, Joe. See you Tuesday, Mr. Elkins. All right, Joe. Have a good trip. Pretty, isn't she? Beautiful. Big Tom, he's in more of a hurry than I am, if that's possible. To get to Danville and be presented with a gold watch. What? Uh, here comes Pete. Why, oh, yeah. hey, Pete. Hi, Joe. Mr. Clovis. Hello, Pete. What's the delay? Washout south of Rapidan. The section gang made up completely of numbskulls. Wouldn't let you through? No. Section boss was afraid the ballast wouldn't hold. Why, he'd had six hours to repair the track before we come along, dang fool. <laughs> they come that way sometimes. Sorry to hand her over to you like this, Joe. Don't see how you can make up the time. I'll do my best, Pete, and still keep her on the rails. Joe! Hey, Joe! Yeah, Mr. Elkins? Message for you from the station master at Danville. Yeah, excuse me, Pete. What's it say, Mr. Elkins? Uh, it says, uh... Tell Joe Brody he'd better get 97 into Danville ahead of schedule if he wants to be here to meet the stork who is coming in on time. Dr. Glenn Denning is on his way out to Mrs. Brody now. Well, congratulations, Joe. Gee, it's happening and I'm not there. I promised Leland no matter what, I'd be there. Well, you can't help it, Joe. Well, anyway, sometimes these things take more time than you'd think. You'll probably get there on time. Not probably, Mr. Elkins. I will get there on time. Come on, Mr. Clovis. Let's roll. All righty, Joe. You set, Big Tom? Set, Mr. Brody. Come on in. Let's go. All right, Joe. Got the time. Yeah, uh, 11.45. We're an hour late. Excuse me. Come on. Let's go. Wait. Let her get started. No one's paying attention to us. There she goes. Come on, Clint. Come on, come on. Give me a hand. There. Grab the rug. Got it? Got it. And he said to his fireman, just shovel in a little more coal. And when we cross that white oak mountain, you can watch old 97 roll. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Frank Lovejoy in The Wreck of the Old 97. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills... Suspense. Ah, you've changed your tune, eh, Mr. McSorley? Ah, it is the Autolite Stayful Battery that did it, Harlow. Now I just drop me foot lightly on the starter and... Ah! 
Well, that's an Autolite Stay Full start all right, Mr. McSorley. And you know, the Autolite Stay Full battery is protected by fiberglass retaining mats to reduce shedding and flaking and give longer life as proved by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. And the Autolite Stay Full needs water only three times a year in normal car use. So, friends, visit your Autolite battery dealer, the man who services all makes of batteries. To quickly learn his location, just call Western Union by number... And ask for me, Operator 25. I'll gladly tell you where you can get an Autolite Stay Full, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Frank Lovejoy in Elliot Lewis's production of The Wreck of the Old 97, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. They gave him his orders at Monroe, Virginia, saying, Joe, you're way behind time. This is not 38, but old 97, you must put her in Danville on time. Well, there they were. Five men on all 97 when she pulled out of Monroe. The engineer and the fireman and the mail car clerk who were supposed to be there. And the two escaped killers who didn't appear on the manifest. And each and every one of them with an urgent need to make up that lost time. Pour on the coal, Big Tom. Pour her on. I'm shoveling as fast as I can, Mr. Brody. Give me all you got until we cross White Oak Mountain. Then you can stand back and watch 97 roll. I'm giving it to you, Mr. Brody. One hundred and sixty-six miles from Monroe to Spencer, part way up grade, and then from Lynchburg down a three percent grade, ending with a curve and a sign, a big sign that said slow speed trestle. Right ahead of that, the still house trestle over Cherry Stone Creek. The run from Monroe to Spencer normally took four hours and fifteen minutes, or did. And that day, they had to pick up an hour. And that's a lot of time to catch up on. Joe Brody turned to his old fireman, said shovel on more coal. For when we hit that old white mountain, you can see old 97 roll. Shovel it in, boys! Shovel it in! We got time to make up on this one. You sure gobbles that coal, Mr. Brody. We picked up ten minutes, Tom. We can't get there too soon to suit me. The party you were telling me about? My mammy and pappy's 15th wedding day. I give them my congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Brody. But they'll all be down at the station. You can tell them yourself. I won't have time, Tom. I'm having a baby. Huh? Well, my wife is. Well, congratulations to you, Mr. Brody. Thanks, Tom. Pour her on there, boy. The gauge is dropping. Yes, sir, Mr. Brody. Yes, sir. Clint! Yeah? This train ain't going very fast. He's climbing, honey boy. Wait till we get over the mountain, you'll see her go. I don't like it. I don't think we ought to hop this train. You don't like it? Just step off any time you like to, honey boy. Clint! Shut up! Get off or shut up! Joe Brody will get me into Danville in time for the exercises. Yeah. Thirty years today. It's a long time. Almost all of the time there is. And after the night, when the gentlemen say the kind things and smile and shake my hand, what? 
Tomorrow there'll be no train to climb aboard. Tomorrow there'll be nothing but the slippers and the pipe and the fire. Not as a reward after a day's run, but for what's left of my life. Sleep late every morning. Go fishing every day. (sighs) Who wants pleasure all the time? (sighs) Never to ride old 97 again. Never to have a job to do. Never to be needed. They call it retirement. I think it's death. I wish we'd never get to Danville. Made up 20 minutes so far, Tom. So, I knew you would. It's just one great engine, Tom. Look at that. 85 miles an hour and she isn't half out. You're going through Lynchburg this fast? I'll slow her. I don't want to scare the folks. You'll spoil all the milk for five miles around town. You barrel through here at 85. <laughs> we'll slow her to 70 then, huh, Tom? <laughs> yes, I guess that'd be real considered, Mr. Brody. <laughs> Lynchburg to Danville and it's down a three-mile grade. It was down that grade that he lost his air brakes. You can see what a jump he made. Now, I want to point out a few things to you. Joseph A. Brody was the best engineer on the line. He knew that road like his own hand. The fast mail, old 97, was a cracked train, not old at all. Perfect condition, carefully checked always, mechanically perfect in every way. Yet, it had a wreck. And here's why my dad's story makes some sense. Here's what must have happened. Now remember, the two killers were hanging on right behind the locomotive. Boy, Tom, we're only eight minutes behind time now. Woo-wee. You sure make this old 97 cakewalk, Mr. Brody. You done made up 52 minutes already. We better start slowing for the trestle. We'll pick up the eight minutes when we've crossed it. Clint. Clint, he's slowing down. Yeah, I feel it. I wonder why. 97 doesn't stop between Monroe and Danville, except for emergencies. Maybe there's an emergency. Yeah, us. We're the emergency. Sheriff at Monroe's telephoned ahead. The guest we skipped town on this train. What are we going to do? We can't jump off. See that hose? Yeah. That's the airline for the brakes. Hold my arm so I don't slip. What are you going to do? Turn that valve, honey boy. Shut off the air brakes. This train ain't stopping this side of Danville. The valves tight. Gotta get this thing. There it is. That does it, honey boy. He ain't stopping now. Ain't we still going to make too fast, Mr. Brody? Scared, Tom? No, sir. Not with you at the battle. I was just observing, though. Ain't we going to make too fast? We'll slow her a bit more, Tom. We can't make that curve at 90. Tom! Yes, sir? The brakes. The brakes don't work. Lord almighty! Look, all the way back and nothing happens. That's a trust Mr. Joe. Jump, Tom, jump! He was coming round the turn doing 90 miles an hour when his whistle began to scream. He was found in the wreck With his hand on the throttle, he was scalded to death by the steam.
first time and now on. Never speak harsh words to your true and loving husband. He may leave you and never return. Now, the wrecking crew got there that night, came down from Lynchburg, just like we're doing. They found the old 97, her nose buried in the mud bag. None of them got there, to Denver. Yeah, you know, I often wondered about the station that night. A strange group of people waiting. The committee from the railroad with Mr. Clovis Gold Watch, Big Tom's family to greet their youngest son, and a carriage waiting to take Joe Brody to the hospital to see his new baby, which I understand was a little girl. And maybe, off in a corner, a few men with guns waiting for the killers. And that's what happened, huh? Well, that's what my dad used to tell me. What time is it? Uh, it's 8.20. We'll have breakfast in Danville. Oh, there you are. See, down there? That's Cherry Stone Creek. See that old mud bank? That's where Joe Brody wrecked the old 97. On a cool, frosty morning in the month of September. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Frank Lovejoy. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. And during these early months of 52, the Autolite family joins in saluting the leading car manufacturers who install Autolite products as original equipment. Our Autolite family is made up of the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants from coast to coast and in still other Autolite plants in many foreign countries. It also includes more than 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite, as well as 96,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world. Our Autolite family will salute Nash Motors on the next Autolite Suspense television program. If you live in a television area, check the day and time of Suspense on television so that you'll be sure to see this program. And remember, be with us next week for another thrilling Autolite Suspense program on radio. Next week, a murder is committed efficiently and safely. And then our star, Mr. Robert Young, finds there was a witness to the murder. The problem, who was the witness? The story is called Backfire, and it will be presented next week on... Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The soloist was Harry Stanton. The Wreck of the Old 97 was written for suspense by Mindret Lord and Christopher Anthony. Featured in the cast were Herb Butterfield, Clayton Post, Eddie Firestone, Junius Matthews, Jack Crucian, Roy Glenn, and Joseph Kearns. Frank Lovejoy can be seen starring in the Milton Sperling production for Warner Brothers, Retreat Hell. And remember, next week on Suspense, Mr. Robert Young in Backfire. This is the CBS Radio Network.